Now, different types of actual investments, you know, the way that you can structure a portfolio is important. And this is where everybody's situation is unique. You know, if you're younger, you want to be more aggressive. You want to lean more heavily on these U.S. stocks, maybe even some foreign stocks. As you get closer to retirement and certainly in retirement, more diversification is key. You do want to add some bonds to the portfolio, but bonds are really the backbone of a retirement portfolio. They provide you with income, which a lot of people need when they are retired, and they also kind of help stabilize the portfolio during the downtimes in the stock market. But again, everybody's situation is unique. Uh, I can tell you, until you're about 10 years away from retirement or more, you know, you you want to be aggressive. I would say 100% stocks. And the way that we operate, at least, when I'm talking about stocks, I'm not talking about individual stocks. I'm talking about mutual funds, ETFs, you know, where these port or these mutual funds and ETFs are made up of hundreds and hundreds of different stocks. And you may not hit a home run. You know, if one stock does very well, you're only going to capture a nice little gain out of that. The flip side of that coin, though, is in bad years, if a stock goes down 50%, your mutual fund or your ETF is not going to get hit as hard. But long term, the benefit of a mutual fund or ETF is, is that if the market does well, which the stock market does go up 75% of the time, you're going to achieve long term steady growth. And there are some other things in here, alternatives, you know, you can, if you want to go gold, silver, oil, private equity, I mean, there's an endless, endless list of alternatives. And doesn't make sense for everyone, but it just so you know, you, there are further ways to diversify your overall portfolio. Real estate's also another big one. Uh, you know, just the way that we operate, if we do portfolios, if we do hold any real estate, it's a very, very small percentage of the overall portfolio. If you just look historically long-term, stocks and bonds are the place to be. Stocks are going to outperform, outperform bonds long-term, but like I said, when you're in retirement, you want to reduce that risk. And a great way to do that is bonds. And right now, um, for any of you, if you keep a lot of cash on hand, you know, just know that interest rates are pretty high right now. And you can get a decent return in either a high yield savings account or a money market fund paying around four or 5%. And you don't have to tie yourself in for any term like a CD, like a certificate of deposit where, you know, maybe you take a 12 month CD, you invest some money they give you 5% return, but you can't touch that money for the whole 12 months. A money market fund or a high yield savings account is going to give you more liquidity, more flexibility, and a comparable rate. Maybe not as high as a CD, but lower rate with more flexibility. And I bring that up because you know, just last year, my own savings account was paying 0.01%, which is nothing. And it's a joke in the interest rate environment that we're in right now. So I moved you know, some excess cash that I had over to a money market fund where you can get more return. So it's just things like that to you know keep an eye out, see if there are opportunities out there for you to receive more interest, make a little more money. Now, you know, pros and cons of different types of investments. So, you know, I mentioned stocks, and when we're talking about it here, it is we're talking about the individual side of things. So, you know, you can buy companies that you know are familiar with. You know, you can own Apple, you can own Microsoft. And there is high reward. I don't know if you guys have heard of NVIDIA or if you've seen what it's done in the last year or so. It's taken off astronomically. And you know that's where you do have the potential for high reward. But when we go over to the other side, you know the value can fluctuate. With high reward, there is higher risk. So individual stocks on the stock side of things are about as risky as you can get. That's kind of why I mentioned we're bigger fans of mutual funds, ETFs, for more diversification, reduce your overall risk. We go down, you look at bonds, you know, a bond is debt that's tied to a company or it could be, you know, a project or a municipality. Essentially, essentially the way the bond works is the company is issuing debt. Imagine you give a company a thousand dollars. They can go do whatever they want with that. They pay you back in payments. And that's what the interest is. And then at the end of the term, they give you that thousand dollars back. So it's a safer investment than stocks. It does take a little longer and you don't get as high a return but again, less risk. Now, this third one, you know, this really is, like I said, our wheelhouse, mutual funds. And then I would put ETFs in the same category. And I'll address it now because I know it was a question that I received. You know, comparing a mutual fund to an ETF, they're essentially the same thing. ETFs are popular right now. 
because you can trade them throughout the day. So the way that a mutual fund works is it only gets priced once a day, and that's after market close. So you can't trade it during the day. Or if you do make a trade during the day, you don't know exactly what you're buying or selling it for because, again, that price is decided after market close. An ETF, the price changes throughout the day. You know, If you trade it at 12.30 on a Tuesday, you're going to sell it or buy it for whatever that price is showing. It can happen instantly. Um, but other than that, the way they're structured in terms of their actual investments is very similar. They own hundreds of stocks or hundreds of bonds. You get that diversification um, and you reduce your risk overall. Now, annuities, at Advanced Capital, we do have advisors who are eligible to sell insurance and sell annuities, they choose not to. I would say just be cautious. If, you know, if you're younger, there's no reason to ever have an annuity. But even as you approach retirement or you're in retirement, just be cautious if someone is trying to put you in an annuity. Typically, they're going to receive around 8 or 10% upfront commission on what they sell you. And they're going to sell you on the word guarantee. And they're going to guarantee you can't lose any money. But with every ceiling, at least in this example, with every ceiling or with every floor, there is a ceiling. So you can't lose anything in annuity, but they're going to cap out what your potential return is. So, you know, if they have a 5% cap and they're putting you in annuity, but the market goes up 14%, well, you can only cap out at that five and you're missing out on a lot of potential return. So just bear in mind, you know, what comes with an annuity. And then cash, you know, there is no market fluctuation, which is good but it doesn't really do a whole lot. And that's, you know, right now is the first time in a very long time for us where you can actually make some money on some cash. So that's why I mentioned the money market fund, the high yield savings account, because this typically, you know, it typically is low return on cash. So right now is a good opportunity to get some extra interest with low risk. And then the last thing is real estate. You know, when we're talking about actually buying real, like when, when we work, we will buy like real estate mutual funds. So these mutual fund managers, you know, they'll buy commercial real estate, residential real estate. This is talking more so about direct real estate. Obviously, there's a lot of high high reward. You know, if you buy a home, fix it up, rent it out, or even flip it down the road, you can make good money on that. And you do get tax write-offs as well. Um, the cost can be very high, though. If you have to fix it up, uh, if the people who are renting the place do some damage, you know, the liability may fall on you ultimately. And, you know, high risk. Uh we all know what happened about 15 years ago where the bubble burst and you know real estate prices crashed. So there is high risk with real estate. And you know, that's I keep using the word diversification, but that's kind of the key here is getting a mix of these investments, you know, getting a mix of stocks and bonds, maybe even dabble in in real estate or in alternatives. And overall that's going to give you a portfolio that can perform well long term. I've been waiting on this moment So glad I'm a opponent Roll with me and never lonely You could be my one and only Swear we can last a lifetime Never had a love like mine Do the shade still shine From the first time we locked up Like a shooting star